Hello everyone, it's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. YK in the building. Yo, yo, yo. Good How morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm fine. I'm fine. I love the... I am happy, yeah. Salah. Thank you. Oh, so. thank you. Thank you. Nima mm. just gave me turkey. I mean, she specially... Ah. Well, she knows I don't eat goat meat. <laughs> Ram. 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 They all the same to me. Goat Ram. They all the same to me. It's called it's Lagos meat. people. Ram mm. and goat are not the same. My children too think Ram and goat are the same. I said, if you're, if you're brought up in Lagos, you, uh -huh. you don't know the difference. Uh, I don't know the difference. So you have turkey. Oh, fantastic. So she gave me turkey. I haven't right. opened it yet. Well, it's nice I'll eat it, Gary when I get to shrine. Ah, that's what I'm having for Gary, Is it pepper turkey? Yeah, I couldn't pepper the turkey this year. I just fried everything dry. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. I'll find pepper. <laughs> I wanted to bring yaji for you. You know, you have you usually use yaji, yaji sauce. Yaji pepper How are you for doing, uh, Nima? I'm fine now. I'm happy. I'm, I have hangover stress over from, from cooking yesterday, but it was fun. We had, um, I had my friends come around to help. I will cook salad food. We are still in salad mood. I will be doing salad again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, at my mother's. So we've not done salad all around. Salad continues till Sunday. Ah, yes, so. Because there was no traffic today and I left the house late. I was so <laughs> A lot of people before we travel and they're not back yet. So mm -hmm. that's what we had. Okay, Mario, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm amazing. I was just having a conversation um, recently with someone and he used to be an Uber driver, and I said, why did he stop? He said he did it for only a few months. He was saying that um, because it takes up too much of his time, he doesn't get enough time to sleep. Mm. And this is not a rich, wealthy person. And he says for him, it's important that he, his health comes first. I know sometimes when people make some of these decisions, we just assume, oh, the person is not focused enough, not ambitious enough, not pushing enough, but some people actually put um, some things mm -hmm. more important than just making money. And it's important to know that not everyone that is not making that big money is lazy or not chasing it. But, or it's unhappy. You know, or it's unhappy. But they are chasing other things that bring them happiness and for them that is success. Mm. And it was just eye-opening, a new, a fresh perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm. Good, good, good. When oh, you, you are sounding yeah. very dull today. Yeah? What's up? Oh my Lord, are you for real? Yes. yes. Okay, all right. Don't worry, the Lord is our strength. Yeah. Okay, is will, everything is well. <laughs> is fine. it you had too much salad? Meat? Possibly, possibly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, interestingly, I cooked for the first time, as in the salad cooking. And I told you that my boss gave yeah. me a goat. So I just said, okay, let us, so my, my PA said, let's do it ourselves. I was surprised. I got the adogon, the everything. They killed it. I mean, for me, I've never cooked that kind of quantity of meat in my life before. I mean, she's like, we can't do it, we can't do it. I'm like, ah, this quantity of meat. And it was seasoned and fried. I'm like, ah, so simple. It's not as difficult as we make it look, you know? It's so it was interesting. It was so good. you're going back to your Muslim roots. <laughs> <No. You're> just <laughs> helping out. I'm just helping out. <laughs> All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We're going to start with the nation. COVID-19 infection rose by 77% in one week. Hey. Mm -hmm. Don't destroy Nigeria's image, presidency cautions. Two million young Nigerians to get UNICEF job training. Benin Republic yet to arraign agitator Igboho. Residents protest over abandoned 22 billionaire Akurea Doe Road project. Generator fume kills family of four in Quara. Nigeria UAE in talks over gold illegally ferried to Dubai. Let's start with the major headline. Yes, I've got the major headline, and it's talking about um, how things are looking as regards COVID-19 inf infections. And um, it's just saying that um, in the past week, we've had a 77% increase in the cases. And this is also... as. Um, 
alongside the fact that recoveries have also dropped where we used to have hundreds of recoveries in the day. Now, I think it was only a little over 50-something that recovered. You know, the deaths have also increased. And it just, um, NCDC is just telling us that we should just be more um, careful and observant of the guidelines and that the Delta variant is real. Mm. It is it spreads faster and its effects are even, you know, worse than the one we already know. So that's it. Just not good news. And so yeah. that means we should be more careful. Now okay. The, um, Sunday, Buhu story. Yes, please. Go ahead, Wake. Yeah. Um, the lawyer has shed light on how he was captured um, or how he was arrested, not captured. Okay. He was in the plane already with his wife and his brother when they said there was an alert that oh, he was wanted and they came down and when they got down out of the plane, they actually put up a fight. Uh, Sunday Gu was beaten and his arm injured, they still put him in handcuffs, and then um, the uh, Benin Republic have said, no, they have to do everything properly. They can't just extradite him. <coughs> and then, um, now, what about those courts? Because I know there was, a, there was a protest also at the courts, right? Yeah, they at, was, uh, at the court and in Ibadan. Yes. The one in Ibadan was dispersed by police, and they put, in fact, when they got to the court, the protesters, they thought he would be arraigned that day, but he wasn't. Okay. So they were just there. So it was just, we're still waiting. Um, I think it was mm -hmm. supposed to be arraigned yesterday, Wednesday, so that didn't happen. So we'll see what happens today. I have to take us to the last story. I have the UNICEF story. Go ahead, please. So um, young Nigerians between the age of 10 and 23, 24, sorry, will be benefiting from this uh, multi-collaborative training between our federal government and UNICEF, and they have plenty of partners. They started a program called Gen U in 2018 and they have collaborations with about 200 partners. They are supposed to train them in tech, you know, this young initiative, uh, the new, what they call it, AI, AI and all of that. So, the, uh, so by, they are looking at 2023, they would have trained 2 million people and by 2030, they are looking at training about 20 million young people across the continent. So Nigerians are all right. Already in <clears throat> I got this news about the um, federal government says that there's a collaboration, legal collaboration within Nigerians and the, um, th I think it's Dubai. So illegal mining of gold hmm. is being taken to UAE hmm. and they collect duties on it uh, in Dubai. But we, they don't pay royalties to yes. Nigerian government. So they're trying to work with the UAE government to seize any gold from Nigeria without certificate of exploitation. So if you are taking it illegally from, from legally from Nigeria, you should get certificate of um, exploration before. And secondly, they've also assured us that the Ajal Kuta steel will be the end of President Buhari's um, tenure. Hoping oh, that that's hopefully good news. And that would be great. They've they, yes. they spoken with the Russian company that built it. And what they said is that they are doing a technical audit. We don't know how the technical audits will take. Mm -hmm. Before you do a technical audit, before mm -hmm. you then agree on the pricing, and then what we hope that indeed, that is to be fixed. OK, let's move on now to the punch. Bene rejects Igboho's hasty extradition. Lawyers write Germany to stop moves. Hijab-wearing lady parading fake name caught with 465 kg drugs. Generator fumes kill four Lagos-based family members in Quara. Baptist considering ransom to <coughs> free abducted students says we are boxed. 13 killed as bus rams into truck on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Despite aggressive revenue drive, AFG suffers 1.4 trillion naira shortfall. 49 years of waiting, overgrown weeds, impassable. Impassable Rotel Mambila Power Project stories of dashed hope. And sanction officers involved in the $274.2 million external loan loss, it says Senate. Okay, let's start with the human interest stories in Punch. Um, who has the generator of film story? Why can you have that? Or? Um, yeah, the, the, it, it wasn't really, it just said the family of four went home, went, went to the village for um, the Salah festivities. Salah. Sure. They slept with the generator. I'm assuming they slept with the generator in the house. And in the morning, Half of them are dead. The other two are in hospital, in hospital critically ill. Oh my God! And just to advise We've discussed people this over time. not to sleep with the generator in the house. Mm. I don't know how people can do that. You know, it's really dangerous. See, our case is our case is um, a sad case of um, um, we don't know helpless when it comes to issues of power. But you cannot 
outsmart yourself. So okay. if you think your generator is not safe outside, go and sleep in the dark. Put on the touch light, open your windows and sleep, uh, uh, open doors, but mm -hmm. don't, I don't, don't put your journey inside. That his generator was downstairs and it was on. In the middle of the night, the generator went off. And they say, who is that? They say, come down. Come and collect it. Come and find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's why people put it in doors. That's why people put wow. it in the house. So, yeah, but it's not safe. But I want to tell you the story okay. of, sorry, the, the 13 that were killed by yes. the bus. In Lagos, the expressway. The, the, the truck was stationed, was stationary. The guy was overtaking another car. He didn't see what was to, uh, Yeah, he didn't see the bus wrongfully mm. overtaking on the wrong side. And then he rammed oh, and killed people 18 died. people. Can you imagine? Sad. There were 25 of them. If he survived, you know. He doesn't say whether yeah. he survived or not. Assuming, I don't think he would have survived. Yeah, because, because he they all died. So he yeah, might have yeah. also died. Really 13. sad. Yeah, so there's this um, lady. Her name is Choma Afam, a 36-year-old who has been arrested by NDLEA. She and her partner, Peace Caleb, a 22-year-old. They um, were transporting... Um, drugs from Onisha through Makadi and they were on their way to Gombe. They were um, arrested with over 296,000 tablets in the Ghana Must Go bags. They said 43 kg of diazepam and 33 kg of XO5. That these ladies would wear hijabs and they have different aliases. Especially Chaba would like to use these names like Amina, Ifunaya, different names, but you know, finally, and then she used to use that to avoid being searched Search. during routine checks. But mm. thankfully, this time around, they checked them and they found all this on them. I have the sad story of the Bambila 49 years after. So, you know, this government, well, this uh, Mambila power project was supposed to help us generate over mm. 3,000 megawatts yeah, of power. Story. But administration after administration, and now, or like uh, the one that you're saying, before uh, the uh, um, Ajakuta, Ajakuta still company that is possible before the end of this administration, Mambila doesn't even have the possibility. And you know they've recontracted this to another Chinese company who's supposed to make things happen like magic, but we're still where we are. If you go, the, the punch reporter took a trip down the entire area and still the roads are as worse as they mm. were before. I think we need to be deliberate if we want to go this country. Okay, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. My jet shot at with explosives, fights to control, destroy, says Pilate. Catholic bishops condemn FG for alleged selective justice. Emirat gives nomadic husband 30 days to leave the Emirate. Yoruba in Kutonu foiled in Boe's extradition, says lawyer. Again, suspected husband killed 13 in Benue. Uh, editors caution NBC over persistent anti-media policies. 2023, APC will soon pick consensus candidates, says, candidate, says uh, um, Secretary. Okay, let's start with the way. Who has this pilot story? Ah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our pilot, um, Dairo, is his man. name, the mm -hmm. young pilot who was rescued recently by the Nigerian army, was narrating how his flight was brought down. So he said explosives were shot at his, uh, his plane and the plane landed and the bandits started to to pursue him round all the villages and places that he went. But he narrated in a very uh, action movie star how he kept trying to detour them and how he had premonition about this uh, 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 some weeks before. And finally, he got to a village where the villagers were happy. So we, we hear stories where they say, no, some villages are loyal to bandits, but these villagers that he met were happy to rescue him. The person that he first met him gave him drugs, tried to help with his wounds, you know, gave him clothes to change. And when they took him to the Emir, he more than happily, graciously called the Nigerian army to come and rescue him. And that's how he was saved. But the army traced, they raised him, they pursued him everywhere. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sorry, the bandits. The bandits. The bandits. The bandits. The bandits. The bandits. He, he also said mm -hmm. that he doesn't know why they're still calling them bandits. bandits. Everything was like Boko Haram. Yeah, exactly. He said, and he said, so many things happened to him before that. Like, he's putting his phone on his lap and then putting it, holding it when he was ejecting from ah. the plane. That, that, that saved him. Yes. That 
said it was it was had only been God that is serious. Mm. I don't understand. Put his phone in. So if, if he had left was still, so because he was injected with the phone in his hand, he was oh. able to now make the calls. Oh. But imagine if he had just left it on his lap yes, and he ejected yes. he won't have been There's a story that caught my attention. The Emir, yeah. okay. uh Emir of Muri in Taraba State has given bandit no not bandits, um, the nomadic headsmen <laughs> in his community 30 days ultimatum. According to him, these people came into their communities and neighbor, as neighbors and they were invited and allowed to stay in their communities. But now they started killing uh, members of his community and um, they called them Bororo. That's the nomadic headsmen from neighboring Bororo. communities. Bororo. Bororo. Bororo, sorry. You came into us to stay in our forest. We allowed you. You're not, if you are one of us, which is a Muslim, you will not be killing our, our people. So therefore, they're saying that they've given their young people a directive to shoot at sight. Ah. It says, <laughs> says that if you are said that if you are not if you are not Muslims, I want to tell you like we fought the infidels before, we will fight you. So I've given you 30 days ultimate to leave our forest, or after the expression, we will kill them. This so, village, this Emir, which village is in I think they, I think they, they should beef up security around them, following the style mm. that you know in the past. But we should also make sure that security is good so that people yeah. don't resort to self-help. Yeah. And he was saying something that was important. He mm -hmm. was saying that mm -hmm. there was somebody that actually connived with the, with the, with the headsman. Yeah. They caught him, took him to the police station. Then and the police they released him on bail. Yeah. Okay. And they're still seeing him around the community. Okay. Like he won't allow that again. That if next, when, if next person they caught that was conniving, they will they're going to kill his father, exactly. his mother, his entire family That's members. Self -help. That's self-help. That's self-help. That's self-help. That's self-help. That is war. Yeah. That is war. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, while they are chasing someday, go and carry up and down. The ones inside our the house. The ones that they are supposed to face, they have not faced them. All right, Should let me go. We're going to break. Okay. When we come back, we'll continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to take one more story in, in, in Tribune. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the Nigerian Guild of Editors um, is saying that Nigerian journalists and especially their members are not best friends of terrorists or bandits, and they are never, dis you know, disposed to giving bloodthirsty criminals advantage in coverage, you know, in the media, and that they are just worried about this um, present uh, um, NBC. Um, rules that directive, just keep yeah. yeah directive that just keeps putting the media in a bad light and saying that the hope that this is not employed by the NBC to ban newspaper reviews in broadcasting stations because um, it is a view that the role of independent critical and trustworthy journalism has never been more important now in our country and they're also saying that um, it is that um, NBC the government should be mindful that um, it's important for freedom to be uh, freedom of expression of speech to mm -hmm. be expressed. That they work hand in hand with security, but they should not be pitted against each other. He said um, they reiterated that there's no security without free media and mm. free expression, and no free expression and free media without security. Saying these two terms should come hand in hand and not fight each other in the general interest of the nation. Exactly. Moving on now to Daily Sun, Igbo mm. protests rock about Okutano and courts. Again, gunmen strike in Benue, kill 43, raise 50 houses. Return of looted artifacts, Edo Muslims back about Benin to take custody. NDLA arrest lady for trafficking 296,000 tabs of illicit drugs. Anambra Guba, I'm ready to win, Gochuku Uba says. Media not supporting terrorists, NGE. Shake up in IPOP, Epa sacked as broadcaster for not following rules. Okay, which story are we taking? Let's start with the artifacts. Who are yeah, so the, you know, the artifacts uh, mission that will be returning from Europe to Nigeria yeah. has been going back and forth with that, between the, the government, whether it's the state government that should receive it or the, um, the royal family in Benin. So the chief imam, Abdul Fattah Enabulele, has pitched the tents he sent with the Oba of Benin, saying that they, have, they give him 110% and I want to join them, that the artifacts should be returned to the palace of the Oba of Benin and not to the state government. Right. Yeah. Um, the, um, 
They've sacked um, the IPOB, have sacked um, um, Simon Ekba, who was, he, Kano had put him as his successor, successor on the radio station, and um, oh. he's been sacked because he's not following the code of conduct um, of the media platform. Okay. That it's very sad because he was handpicked by um, Nandi Kanu, but he's not, so they've had to let him go. Okay. Moving on to daily trust in securities and for Akebi, Niger lead as gunmen kill over a thousand Nigerians in one month. Small scale farmers raise alarm over poor access to fertilizer. Gunmen not old baby, 12 others in Benue. FG cancels 7% surcharge on aircraft and um, spare parts. 2023 will fill consensus candidates, say APC. Kidnappers abduct six residents in Abuja. FG lost 54.1 billion naira in exchange rate on external loan. Okay, let's start with the fertilizer story. Yes, yeah, so, so um, the fertilizer, uh, the farmers, and especially the small scale farmers, have declared the cost of fertilizers, and because of that, um, they've avoided buying them. So, according to this report, even the MPK fertilizer, that one goes for 14 to 15 thousand, and the Uria one goes for 11, 5 to 12 thousand. And the people, we were all excited when Dangote fertilizer came into the market, hoping that it would bring it to the normal Nigerian price. Because the federal government subsidizes this one at 5,000, between 5,000 to 6,000. But, but then, when you get to the market, the wholesale and all the other market factors still makes it expensive and difficult to, to buy. But Dangote's fertilizers came into the market not far from the price of the you know, the foreign ones, at, is selling at 13,000 to 13,500. So what will be the difference. And, you know, this, we need this particular um, product to help assist farmers if we really truly want to be food sufficient. But yeah. I don't know why it's happening. When governments give them, uh, they give them um, tax um, uh, re Rebus. rebate. Yes. Okay. They give them t a tax, a tax off for importation of these fertilizers. They also subsidize it at market price. But then... We see this uh, uh, business of people inflating prices happening in the market yeah. and discouraging farmers. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I have this story where um, gunmen have suspected to be kidnappers, they say. Um, they went into this um, area in Gogolada in Abuja and they abducted six residents of that area. And the head of the area of that community saying this is like the since Jul since January since this year this is like the ninth attack that oh. the people of his community have suffered that these particular ones that happened on Monday came in shooting sporadically positioned themselves in strategic areas then went into three homes and took people out and they've gone with them they haven't contacted them yet so they don't know but they've spoken to the police um, the report says that they tried to speak to the police in charge of that area and um, they couldn't get in touch so we don't have any report from the police side concerning this particular kidnap to hear Terrible. that this is the ninth one this year already Terrible. just one community I said, when i was in abuja they told me they said don't walk around don't careful just stay in your hotel yes don't, go, don't walk <laughs> Because they can kidnap anybody at any time. Can you imagine? The story I have is on Benue State. Another really sad story. A three-month-old mm. baby and 12 others were killed by gunmen mm -hmm. in Benue State. Uh, they said that was around, at, um, I think it was uh, in the afternoon, on Tuesday, uh, doing a burial in, um, in Tokula. And people who were coming back from the burial came under attack. And these people were killed. It was about 10 p.m., yes, on Tuesday. And there was another attack in several different spots, different people killed, and the gunmen shot at children. They shot the child in right the, the chest, a, a three-month-old baby. You know, I, I think it's so terrible. These people, they are... Animalistic. They don't have hearts. They are heartless. No conscience. I mean, no and hearts, I, no conscience, no human feeling. I don't know I mean, what the go I can only imagine what the governor is going through in that state. What is he, feel, he seems helpless. Autumn, yeah. He doesn't know what to do. Nobody knows what to do. What do these gunmen want? Is it money? Only money that you let you kill a child? You know, they had given him um, an ultimatum the last time they came. They said, until he comes, doesn't adhere to be, the open be, grazing. grazing. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I think our final paper is The Guardian. I'm not sure there's any story we've not taken. Nigeria has lost its soul, Catholic Bishop tells Buhari. Diplomatic stalemate in Benin over Igbo's ex uh, detention and extradition. Editorial, federalism is the answer after all.
uh, again, APC forecloses third term bid for, well, for real. I mean, this, according to the APC leader, they said that that was a rumor, that they had, enough, they, had, they had no third term plans, and they are working together to get a candidate for 20, uh, 2023. Okay, then you know, I saw that yesterday missed. and yeah. I was thinking it should not That's be for the list of our making, <laughs> making the papers again. Politics. What, what, Politics. Uh, the president should run when he's 100 or what? I don't, I don't understand. understand. <laughs> Anyway, any other story we've not taken at all in this story? Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay, yeah, I said the SSG. Myself, the, the, SSG one? Okay. You no, know, the okay. um, IPOP guy, he, he didn't sign the code of conduct. That's why they sacked oh, him. Oh, that's why he was Not sad. because he didn't follow it, but because he, he didn't, didn't sign, sign it. it. Oh, gotcha. Okay, and then okay, the cool. SSG's mom was abducted. She's an octogenarian. She was abducted, I think they said 10 p.m. on Tuesday. We haven't heard anything from them yet asking for a ransom. Do you know the worst part of our own? It's not her first time of being adopted. Wow. She has been adopt abducted before. Can you imagine? This is their customer. And that's sad. So this, what, what is happening in this country? We are just taking it as... It's, yeah. It, because it's not happening to it's anybody that we know directly. Mm. Ah. It is serious. It Let, let's Let go. Let's go on a quick, quick break. When we come back, it's Thursday. We want our hot topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. For staying with us. So this segment is mainly about Nigerians abroad and generally about our conduct, both on <coughs> issues of marriage, dec decorum, behavior, and um, different ways I've been observed. So there was a video we picked up. I think the video actually trended last year or a couple of years ago, but we, we, it was, was necessary for this conversation. Dr. Nkechi Hari made this video. Uh, he was trying to point out in various ways and instances that African women in the diaspora have totally lost their values and culture. The real conversation we wanted to have concerning that video was where he was referring to the identity of Africans abroad. Mm -hmm. And he was specific to the fact that when African women especially begin to earn money, so according to him, the Indian, the Chinese women, they earn from $100,000 to $180,000 annually, and they're still humble, they don't lose their culture, they are still... Um, they, they are quite humble, you know, with their family. But Africans, on the other hand, especially Nigerians and probably Ghanaians, ordinary $80,000 a year as a nurse, we begin to boss our, our spouses, and we want to buy multiple cars, buy designer wares, use the foreign and American justice system against our husbands. And that's why we remember that we have rights, and we try to tell them that... Um, they also should be taking care of the babies, bathing the children, doing taking the trash. Well, you know, other the, the Chinese, the Indians still retain their culture of is this subservience or mm. culture of um, mm. humility um, towards their spouses. That's on one end. Now, the other issue of conduct, which I'd like us to link at some point, is the video that trended about the Falcons. We'll try to show that clip to you also. The, our own Falcons were on the public bus. When they were attacked by another Nigerian living abroad, accusing them of not of, of representing a terrorist country, Nigeria, and almost assaulting them, verbally assaulting them. So the, the issue now is conduct. Now, let's start with the issue of marriage and, and family, and then we'll come to the issue of the Falcons in a bit. What are your thoughts? When, when you saw this video, what came to mind? Do you agree, do you disagree with so him? Let me Nig address Dr. Nkechi first. Nigerian women, we have suffered. Ah, Africa, we have suffered. Every time our men find the opportunity to talk negative, they start to describe. I'm, I'm sure he's describing his mother too, sisters, everybody. Because the issues are the same, whether we are in Nigeria or abroad. We are overworked women. And the moment you have the courage to say, I need help to your husband, you are stood up to him. When your husband can beat you here, I know women who took the uh, 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 domestic violence from their husband, all the battery from the husbands, and they were pursuing visas. Because they know when they cross border, they will have mouth to talk. Because we are here when family members attend uh, family meetings to resolve co uh, conflicts between couples that involve domestic violence. 
What you, did you do to him? You two behave yourself now. Don't stand up. We, if his sister talks at him, does he slap his sister? Mm. If his mother knocks his head, does, does he beat his mother? That you know you allow him, is okay because he paid bright price. Because okay. that's what everybody talks about. That she, she has done her a privilege of removing her from her father's house. That she, has not, she now has missed in front of her. Name. So the consequence of it is to be beaten, mm. battered, and but insulted. It's... Emotional abuse is even worse. Mm. Mm. You tell the woman, you, can, you are beneath me, you can't be more than me. You, yeah. you destroy a woman because of that. And the moment the woman can speak up, they'll say, no, it's because she has crossed borders. It's but the same Mima, issues. We, we, we use this phrase, politics is, is local. The same, when issues of marriage sometimes is local, it's, it's cultural. So what, when, when you hear people like, talk like this, are we also using a foreign system to uh, analyze or to uh, resolve our own local issues? So for example, if there's a problem within the family, like this man said, and maybe the Chinese community or the Indian community, they have ways of solving it. But we are we were emancipated like the American women. So we mm. go there, we use the American justice system, yep. forgetting that our family issues is local. I, I'm just trying to put that different angle. Should no, I ask I was okay. So I have seen, okay, from the, the man speaking, I can tell he's at least of African descent. <laughs> so he's very familiar with the African issues. That's on one hand. Because the issues that he has highlighted that the African women have, and particularly Nigerian and Ghanaian women, where they seem to pick up accents, wear hairs that are not theirs, and just all of a sudden have attitude um, and attitude problems and just um, rude maybe towards their husbands. And he says Indians and Chinese are not like that. Well, I have seen videos from India, um, yeah. where there, there's a campaign talking about how the men seem to um, put their wives down no. and overwork them. Yeah. And, you know, they put them in ads and different things where they're yes. encouraging men to involve, put their hands and involve their, themselves in how the home is run. Yeah. There's a very popular one that shows an Indian woman, she gets up in the morning, she puts food on the table, she does this, she does that, she goes out to work, she yeah. comes back, she takes care of the children, the husband comes, switches you. on the TV, his, his legs up, and her father is watching and he's sad yeah. because he realized he did that to her mother and, he has, and then he joins her to it. help her and then they're talking to Indian men to put their hands. So maybe you don't on it. So instead of comparing, let's just say that he's talking about uh, what he is familiar with. Mm. Now, the part that he has highlighted for me, that women have found a voice where, in the cases where they have been abused, where mm. they have been, um, you know. Subservient. Yes. I don't think that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We have parts of our culture that we should encourage, that we should hold on to. That is true where we speak our language and we hold our, our identity with so much um, pride. But then there are parts of our culture, especially when it comes in marriage and how men and women act within marriage, where the man is the head and however he behaves, you know, especially where the woman starts to earn money. We see that, we've seen those videos now where men, Nigerian men were killing their um, wives who are nurses because she's earning the money and not bringing back home mm. and not handing it over to him because I'm the man. I brought you to this country. Hey. So you must pay. You must pay me. Everything you earn, you must give it to me. And the woman is saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm. I am now in a country where I even have a voice. I can go to the legal system and they'll answer me. So okay. in that case, me concerning me. that particular one, I don't agree with this okay, man. Okay, let me, let me come to work. What are, what are your thoughts? Where? Because you've, you've seen abroad and you know a lot of Nigerians living abroad. Mm. So... I watched the video. I've watched the video many times because okay. I found it really hilarious. And we are, what I like about what he said was that we lose our identity. So wh while I, I think that women should not be slaves to their men, I do not agree with that. And maybe Indians, I don't know about Indians, I don't know their culture. I, I, know, I don't care about their culture. I care about my own culture. So if... Indian women want to be slaves to their husband. That's their own cup of tea. Mm -hmm. What he said about African women losing their identity, they go and buy their hair, and they'll be like, oh, so, so strong. They will be like, so, so strong. But I'm talking to my own man, I'm strong. I could, I understood him from that point of view. Right. Why do African women, why do African, not even just African women, men as well, lose their culture because yeah. they are in, if, you know, yeah, why, why can't that you, that men, as, a, as an African person, mm. man, woman, girl, child, boy, everything. Thank you, Ike. Why can't you retain 
who you are and be proud of that. Why, okay. why must you be? Look, our young hip hopers today, because American artists wear sunglasses, yeah. all of them wear sunglasses bling, bling. inside the nights. <laughs> Mm. So why must Africans why lose their identity? So I can think on this table, we all agree with the first part, that mm -hmm. he, he shouldn't condemn women who are emancipated enough yes. to become, to speak, to, to, to speak up. We understand that very clearly. But the angle we're going to right now is the issue of culture, identity. And I, I, yes. I will share an example, example with you. When a Nigerian family travels abroad, their mentality is, I don't want to stay with black people. I want to stay in the white community. And if they are maybe like doctors and they're very wealthy, they find a white community. And they are pride. Well, we're the only black people here. There's only, my, my children's school, he's the only black person. For them, that's pride. Now, when that child goes into a black, white community, he's still an outsider because mm. no matter what, mm -hmm. they don't see him as an insider. Truth. He grows up hearing about African American community, hearing that, oh, they're there, wishing that he was part of them. He loses something. He now grows up. And also, I know a family that one, was, one child killed himself. And that one, I think something happened. They, so I, I can't remember two disasters happened in the family because they were totally secluded from the African American community. They wanted to just make them feel like, ah, you know, you're, you're different from them. So is that identity issue? Why do we go there and want to become white? Not even African Americans. We want to just be totally white. And but, but the, the, there's the other Nigerian community that they stay with each other. You know, the evil community in Texas. They help each other. They mm -hmm. grow together. They form a whole community. Mm -hmm. And those who are able to raise their children, will, well, I, I don't have all the facts. Mm -hmm. Somebody can come and say that maybe you're, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a community in Texas that have been able to grow your they they meet, raise they their children, meet, they, they meet each other. Annual, yes. Uh, so we see uh, Indians, the Chinese, they have they have the Indian community, the Chinese community, and they're still able to retain their culture. But we see, we find ourselves in, the, in, in different communities. Not generalized, so, but let me be very careful. But yeah. Indians are very abusive of the female gender, all their cultures. You know, you can retain a family's uh, dignity by killing your sister for half for just for the mention of seeing her with somebody toasting her. And these cultures are things that Indians are fighting with their media ads so and all of those things. Mm -hmm. I talked about. In India, as a mother, you like, I just ate my daughter-in-law and tell my son, she looked at me somehow and will slap her. Mm -hmm. And the videos are everywhere that they're advocating to change. Mm -hmm. So you now pick a community or a, 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 culture. a, a culture that you know nothing about to use them to compare to your own because you think you know all about it. Do you know what he said? What he said was that... I mean, we have to go on a break? No, no. Say, so your point that we're going to break. Um... What he said was that they still retain their culture. We're not talking about, we're leave, they leave their no, subs. So, no, uh, no, leave no, their subs. Let's leave the second part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let us talk about uh, maintaining uh, your culture. You see them, they still wear their saris. How many African women do you see without well, the hair? Uh, with How many African women do you see without the Gucci yeah, bag? I've seen young girls in bomb shots, so... Ah. Okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> I would love to hear about Nigerians in diaspora. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. To stay with us, we're still on the issue of culture, and um, I know Mariam okay. had a point, yes. Yeah, so, um, concerning cultural identity, and I love the um example that you gave where, when we're raising our children abroad, we hear it. I didn't grow up abroad, but you know, we hear it. There's a there's definitely pride in saying that you are amongst white people, and it's what we were sold, what we were mm -hmm. taught, and we're taught that to be white is better, to be from to be white skinned is better and everything that comes from the white side of the world is better they are more intelligent they are you know they think they are smarter and things like that and i don't know maybe it's just the socioeconomic um realities of africa and black american communities where we also tend to see violence or it could be that media highlights only that side of the mm. black community, where it's usually violence and lack of education. Mm. So Nigerians living here are looking at that and 
I don't want to take my child out of Africa and take him into that community. Right. Like I'm running from this here and yeah. then I'll take them. I want to take them to the one that is highlighted on the media where they are intelligent people. They have Bill Gates, so they have Mark Zuckerberg. Look at the sort of people that they have there. Yeah. That's what I want for my child. So really, we're trying to just align ourselves with the positives of right. that culture. Oh. But in doing that, we make the mistake of making a person feel that if you are not like them completely, then there's nothing good about you. It's okay. important that we're able to speak the way that we speak and not have our fellow Nigerians laugh at you like, yeah. why are you pronouncing your words like that? Yeah. You know. Let me take this call. Good morning from the UK. Are you there? Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mario. Oh, uh, what the... The volume is a bit low. Mm -hmm. The honor yeah. killing is happening uh, with Pakistan, not India. So... I can't hear you, sir. The volume is low. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Olalekon, go ahead, please. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry about that. So then for me, yes. there's the serious issue of identity loss and inferiority complex. I believe that for you to take your child abroad and insist on a white community, even though it might be for safety reasons as portrayed by media, I think you suffer inferiority complex and you would most likely pass it to the child that you're so trying to expose otherwise. Because like Mariah said, that child remains a minority mm. in that community and might even suffer worse Exactly. Levels of racism that you can expect, that mm. you can imagine. And they may, they may not share with you the level of racism that they suffer. Yeah. And whatever mental consequence of it that mm. they grew up with yes. will be your business. So I think a safe community is a safe community, whether white or black. Let your reasons be deliberate. Mm. Know what exactly you're looking for, not so that you, be, you, are, you believe a, a race is superior to yours. Right. And expose your child because you think then your child will be more brilliant and intelligent. You can expose your child to all the uh, opera Winfrey's, them, their own set of people, and find a way to live in communities where they live. If you think, because your child will feel inclusive, included mm. in that, because he, she can see that like her. One of the points this gentleman was trying to make, Nima, was the fact that in other communities, so the Indian communities, you would raise, you give birth to an Indian child there, he understands his language, he speaks his language, born and raised in America, still has their, yes, they can be muddy, you can, can have the American culture, no doubt, but he understands, sometimes they even have the tonality of their, of their, of their, of their roots. Same thing with the Chinese, you give birth, you see a Chinese, yes, the Chinese American, but he still speaks his language. But for Africans, many of us, we don't even want our children to speak our language. Even us living abroad, we don't speak our language to our children. That's what he's saying. So Except that identity, see, that <laughs> identity crisis is what we're talking about because of that, the factors we've experienced in Africa. Mm -hmm. We come there and we don't want anything to do with anything black. I know I had that problem when, it seems that when I, when I was, I was a high flyer, I just got to school, president of this, student government association, I was just doing all this, and, I, and of course, because I was that, my deans knew me, but the African-American community just felt, like, I was this little African, just come and suddenly you're now involved in all these community work, this, you know, is this, are you the only one that is here? Mm. And there was this friction between the black, the, night, the Africans, and then the African-American, they just felt like, well, over Sabi. So we were just the ones high doing also, but, but, but it was after some say, years, we realize that, listen, you have, this is the community you still have to identify with at some point. And I'm happy that Nigerians, Americans, have almost been able to merge both because now we have more um, connections with the African-American communities. But my question, ladies, is how, why are we not able to build African communities successfully, to be wealthy, to help others, as the Chinese do, as the Indians do? How come we don't? You go there, you yourself and yourself, you, your, your, your family and your children alone. You're not trying to help other Africans, other blacks like you. It's just me, myself, and I. You can't you want to become a doctor and just be successful. You know, when... Okay, what? No, I mean, I just... I have a call. Let me take, let me take this call. I'll come to you. Kalu, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Mariah. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, Sorry, I just want to brief for the seconds and the, 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 what we're talking about, the, the community and African culture. And secondly, the long discussion we said about a wife being or misbehaved is taken abroad. And I, I am not agree with you in terms of beating or taking abroad, the woman will be stubborn. Let me just give you an instance. The Bible said it, I didn't know whether the other Quran said it, that the woman be submissive. 
99%, we left on a culture, our culture, and shift other package. Now, uh, Murayo, you mentioned one of the things last time, because I keep on pulling when you talk about marriage issue. When you told your husband that uh, when you say something like your husband take care of the, the home, like generators, school fees, and other things, but you said take care of the kitchen, another package. But at the end of the day, your wife, your husband, when you, when you see expenses you did in the kitchen, you remember your husband, your husband say, ah, I will agree on this issue, that this and that. And you think, you, you think, you, you said it clearly, that, that 99% this man is struggle and, and work very hard to make sure that everything is okay. And you encourage that day that every, every man, every woman, should understand men that it's not easy. School fees and other bills. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really so let me just quickly say, quickly oh, here, that what? if a man is doing his role and he makes the home conducive for his wife, I'm not saying she should speak up to him. I clearly said abusive men find reasons to justify abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, In my go. experience, when they beat their wife, they call her non-submissive. I'm not asking, does beating require her to submit? And if, if this man if, wasn't talking about no, no, men beating you. No, no, he, uh, he says he disagrees, he, and he, I know he, what no, I said. No, no, that, that, this man that called, the man, okay, the no, video. I know, I'm addressing the caller now. So if for that reason, I want to re reiterate what I said. If you're in an abusive relationship in Nigeria, in abroad, do speak up and leave. Mm. Fight and get your freedom because you need to be a whole person to yeah. raise your children. Absolutely. And a dead woman cannot fight to raise her children. Mm. Right, let me, I'm go not yeah. going to go into abusive because mm. uh, we all disagree. We're all on the same page yes, when yeah, it comes to sorry. abusive marriages. Uh -uh. What I, where we are coming from is when, where the man was coming from was where you, because you, you are in America, you've lost your identity. You are, I'm, I'm, done, I'm just saying, it's a marriage, it's a partnership, and you now become the boss. If the man became the boss, you will have a problem with that. Yes. You now become the boss because you're earning yeah. more, mm -hmm. and then you start saying, hey, so you now buy your hair, and you say, hey, I'm just how I'm American. That's where the man was coming from. So maybe from. we should define what it is to be in a marriage in Nigeria and the rules. So when we, when we talk about it like abroad. that, let's, let's let's know, so abroad. I know, and see how we can import, export it abroad. So okay. in, uh, if you're in Nigeria now, who is the head of the home and how does the relationship work in, in symbiotic relationships? So that when you go abroad, it's not that time when you now speak up or you cause okay, you earn more. Let, 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 if you earn more, yeah, you're abusive to your husband. It's wrong. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we we'll continue this conversation. Like I said, I would like to hear from Nigerians abroad. Please call in. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Uh, I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you people, please. I'm also a Nigerian. I live in Vienna. I seek a uh, uh, soul here in Vienna, and I'm living here for over so many years. And you people are representing a terrorist organization, a terrorist government. You, you Nigerian, you should be very ashamed of yourselves. Every one of you here should be very, very ashamed of yourself. I will speak to you. You should, you, it, it, this can't happen in another European country that their youth are representing a government. Stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. A football, a football team should know that we are, we are not, we, 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 we are suffering the youth of Nigeria. Over 10 million youth, Nigerian youth are abroad doing nothing. And you people who are supposed to know the truth are representing a terrorist organization called Buhari, kidnapping his citizens, killing youth. Hey, listen. Excuse me, stay quiet, Mr. Man. I am speaking, I'm not causing any problem. Yes, yes, hmm? Do you understand? The, I am speaking to these youth who have refused to recognize. No, I will. If you touch me, I will call the police on you. If you can't touch me, I will call the police on you. This is not Nigeria. This is not Nigeria. If you, anyone who touch me will get the police. This is Vienna, Austria. This is not a third world country. This is not a third world country. You you are representing a government which are killing their people. 
You cannot be ashamed of yourself. Don't push me. Okay. When you touch me, it's strict dick here. Can you can also, can don't talk? touch me. Can I talk? Go away. Can I talk? This is a democratic nation. Yes. This is not a third world. Yes, I'm right. living in Vienna. I pay my tax. But this I live here. So I'm calling on you, you idiots. Go back home. Don't represent. Be ashamed of yourself. Look at you. Look at you. Look at how you are. You represent a government which is calling. You are from Switzerland. I saw you. I saw you a few days ago. You are a new citizen. I don't think this is how it's done in 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 in, in Switzerland. You are representing a, a terrorist. Thanks for staying with us. I think, um, so before the break, we're talking about, we're still on this issue of identity. And I, I'd really like to hear from Nigerians living abroad, you know, because it's always good to have a better understanding. I mean, what we're comparing is the fact that in Nigerian communities, it seems like there is no identity of Africanness in us. We have, we've adopted the foreign culture and way of life. But when we see other cultures, they seem like they retain theirs. And the question today is, how does that happen? Do we need to retain ours? Or is the idea really to morph into this new Nigerian-American um, identity that, is not, that has nothing African in it? So the, the pursuit I was, like it, right. I was going to say that my own is, look, even from here, we start from here. Yeah. When we start watching TV, too much... Uh, so we, we try to copy the African-American, the way he talks, we do this. You know, whereas the African-American is looking for an identity to identify with Africans. And when you get to, when they get to... Yeah, even uh, more African-American. Uh, Africa, they, they, they now see, ah, we are even worse than them. But, ah, ah. So they too are lost because they, they are now between the devil and the deep blue sea because the Africans that they wanted to look up to are trying to be American. Right, so who are they? All I'm saying is, I think that Africans, men, women, children, everybody, we should just try and retain. I will use Miriam as an example. Miriam, the other day, said on this show that she had her daughter said to her that ah, she was just going out with her hair, and the mom said, ah, "Mommy, you don't want to look glam today." Mm -hmm. And she said, ah, but "You didn't wear your wig." So her daughter associated Being glam, 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 mommy with. Wigs. 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 Yeah. So that, they, they, all that, um, she being not, not grow, she's being conditioned not to believe in her Africanness, not to believe that being, do, doing your hair, weaving your hair yeah, is, I, I've seen, maybe I've seen that, I've not said anything, she had to do her hair like this. <laughs> I was, I know, <laughs> oh, 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 now see what I've been trying to say, that you are, you are, you are losing your identity. It's not, it's bad enough that your own identity is lost. It's that your child will now lose identity. her identity. <laughs> So we can't blame those Nigerians living abroad. We all are all guilty, right? Exactly. So it starts yes, from yes, here. Yes. Exactly. Okay, let me take Hassan. Hassan, are you there? It's been holding for a while. Good morning. Good morning, good, good good morning, morning sir. Morning, yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, something is happening here. And uh, it has to do with us as black race. Black race in the sense that we were discovered. And we refuse to rediscover ourselves. Because even in Nigeria here, in many elite towns, many of them do not even speak the African language. They don't even speak the African language to their children. Chocolate of their children picking up from them. Chocolate of America. When they get there, they become something else. Nigeria, wherever they go to, they do this copy and paste. Very, very unfortunate. And about marriage, my message is to the educated women. They don't respect their husband and they are not submissive. And they always think they can leave the marriage by law. You can't, you can't use law to leave marriage. Marriage is about understanding. No man will ever enslave his wife. No man will ever enslave somebody he loves. But the issue with this educated people is this. I know my right. Where is the right? All the burden rests with men in Africa. 
Yeah, he said it was a time. Now look, the society is not clear to men because everything, everything is for men, everything is for men. You show them all the responsibility. And after that, they took insults as your payback. And you are expecting right. matrimonial harmony in this. Thank you very much, Hassan. Okay. Yes, Mariam. So, hmm. you see this hmm. talk of cultural identity and um, it's, it's, it's a long time coming. It's years and years and years of conditioning. So there's one that we always blame, like this generation. Oh, you don't even know how to speak your language. How do you teach your children? We grew up, I remember growing up, in school, you dare not speak a Nigerian language. It, would be, it was called vernacular. vernacular. And you would put money in a bottle for every time you, yeah. you, in a glass jar, for every time you used a Nigerian. So we had a system in place <laughs> then that conditioned us not to be right. proud or speak in corporate places, use corporate, um, speak our language in corporate places. And here we are today, we're parents. And I'm, I'm seeing a shift in uh, thinking where those who can are trying to encourage that. But secondly, there's also what is happening globally. Our world is now becoming much smaller. People are learning skills. So it's not only because I want to be like a white man. It's also that we're looking at opportunities and we're looking at benefits. So we're now, the culture has now become a culture of what are the opportunities and the benefits that I can get from this place so that my children do not have to suffer the maybe injustices or the things that are not going on in their own community. So people are not necessarily doing it because they hate themselves, but they're looking at um, picking up these things because it is associated with more money, better education, better jobs. That's what is happening. Mm. So that's the cultural identity, you know, in that place. Okay, but also there's me... one that seems to put everything at the, on top of the head of a woman. Like it's the woman's hair and the way that she speaks and the way that she conducts herself in marriage. Mr. Hassan was just talking about the educated woman. Right. You know, that the we need to speak to educated women how they handle marriages. There are so many factors in why a marriage would end. But the mm. educated woman has something your own educated woman right. doesn't have, mm. which is her right and also accessibility well, to, to yes, and accessibility to maybe the courts mm. and opportunity, other opportunities that she can fall back okay, on if that marriage fails. Let me take this call and hold it for a while. Hello, good morning. Are you there? Hello. Hello, you're live. Go ahead, please. Thanks, I'm Cola. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mariah, and your team for the job that you do. Thank you, sir. I am speaking from a very personal experience point of view. Okay. The disaster with marriage in Europe is that it's not a fertile ground for African marriage to thrive. Hmm. And most Nigerian women, when they find themselves in Europe, they are taught that everything is about their rights. Everything you do that your partner does not like is termed abuse. From emotional abuse, financial abuse to all manner of behavior termed abuse is the foundation of the disaster of Nigerian marriages in Europe and America. Nigerian families should, and wives particularly, should know that the Asian women, women, they hold on to their identities, their culture, while living in Europe. In the same European community where you find the average Nigerian woman will tell anything she doesn't like as an abuse. The Asian women, the Indian women, they hold on to their culture. And that's how they marry. their marriages are better sustained than the African marriages. So Nigerian yeah. women should know, and once it happens that they lose their identity, they lose their marriage, and that's how the same effect trickles down to their children. Thank you, New Page. I want, to, I want to take this conversation to raising children abroad because, you see, I, I have a story of a woman, a family, I mean, this is a woman who was sharing her story with me, that it's not her child, they did everything to let the child go to Harvard. I mean, they, all their world savings was taken, this child went to Harvard. Now, it was their pride that their child was in Harvard. So from, from, from sophomore year to graduation year, it was a thing, he had Harvard friends, white, white community, and he was fine. He was on the football team. But at the point of graduation, when Onika Luku now, everybody now went back, their family members, you've graduated, you have your certificate. It's not the Harvard that gets you the job. It's the connection of your parents that gets you the job. 
They did everything to get their child into Harvard, but their child did not, couldn't get a proper job. Why? Because the level, the level of jobs you should be looking for as a Harvard graduate, it is not your connection. It's usually the parents or the connection that your community has. So he was just there, a Nigerian child. He was, he, he was left with nothing. He had to come back to Nigeria mm -hmm. because there was no connection to get I'm him a good a job degree. of Harvard. He came back to Nigeria and, sat, and joined the job market like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's just still raising up. The point I'm trying to make is that we have this, this, uh, this, um, this, this view of uh, my child was going to this community of white people. And when he goes there, they will now show you after graduation that, yes, we are together, but when you leave, we're not, we're not the same. They will go back to their lineage. They will go back to their connections. And you will go back to where you're starting from as an African. You're going to sure. find your way. So it is how do we raise children, Africans, Nigerians? How do we build systems to ensure that when our children do go to this Harvard, they have somewhere within the foreign community to, to grow or even come back home to so grow? You, you need family goals. So a man, just like most scholars, go, I'm so disappointed today by, you know, how Hassan said, educated women, you know, if a man does not know where he wants his family to go, mm. his wife will be focused on the wrong thing, and they would, they would completely distract and di misdirect children that they are raising. You have to be a, a unit to raise proper children. And it's not about arguing. So a woman who wants to be treated fairly, equitably in her marriage, you know, when she respects her husband when he's talking, she wants to be respected, not called, yes, where's my food here? In front of her children, you know? And, you know, a few times when she, if she does something for you, you say a kind word of thank you. We'll be dist if she gets that, both of you will focus on raising proper children. Mm. Not that she's in court trying to get a, a, a freedom. Your children, you are holding on to the children to fight back. And that disorganization, which we, we are failing to address when okay. we face women alone. Okay. Now, we need, because of those different distractions, yes. we see children growing up and the system continues like that. Yeah. Let me take this we should address let's our a quick break. When we come back, we continue. Yeah, yeah. I really want to touch this back. issue of yeah, let so Falcons, but it's looking like we're staying on this. Mm. Stay with us to right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. So we, we certainly can't exhaust this issue of cultural identity because we really would like to hear from Nigerians abroad. But I know the phone lines are a bit, are a bit jammed right now. We we'll keep hoping to get your call. Let's take a few messages before we move on to the Falcon story. Yes, Mike, give us a few messages. Tubes. A few tubes. Yeah. Um, okay. her, her, her one says, accent eh, is not culture. You talk like African, an African in America, you will struggle to land a job. Mm -hmm. Mm. So Jeff is Josephine says, um, mm. like my father will say, fall for me, I fall for you, play go sweet. So love is not about one-sided uh, submissiveness. I did Nobu says, men cannot be submissive, but they must love their wives. And, um, and Chris Mike, Ehi Brian I, says, we're all shouting women are not submissive, but as the men submissive to their wives, mm -hmm. let's turn the table, women are also human beings. Okay. Then Billy Kiss Mafia says, I partly agree with you, the beauty of our diverse cultures is, isn't being practiced enough because it is usually one-sided. It favors one gender over the other if we can, f if we can find a balance. Yeah. Let me take Ade from London. Ade, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good morning. to all of you. Please. Yes, yes, good to have you. I Go ahead. I want to touch on this issue. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you people are talking about the Indian, Indian, Indian. Don't you realize that the Indian women pay dowry on their husband? Thanks. Because they are too many Indians. So they have to submit. Otherwise, the man will go for another one. He will pay for his dowry as well. That's number one. That number two. Crazy. Eh, please call Ade Baku. Eh, hello? Ade? <laughs> hey, we need to Let me take Would you like to speak to Nigerians abroad, abroad, please? Okom Fon says, with all that is being said here about women, how they go abroad and no longer become submissive, it just shows that as Africans, most men don't know what, is being, sub what being submissive as a wife truly mm. means. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me take Angela, this I just want to take this. Clearly, Africans don't really know how oppressed the Asian women are in their exactly. marriages and societies. Mm -hmm. Talk to some of them, and you'll and be you so cry. shocked. Mm -hmm. they, they literally have no voice in their marriage. Yes. So, Madame Wabu says, having been living abroad for 
many years. There's a serious identity crisis with many African families. We copy the wrong things abroad. Many marriages are breaking down because most of the women are copying the Western, Western lifestyle with less value for family life or marriages. The value put on family life abroad is not strong, and there are a lot of dysfunctional families that break down. We need to maintain our African family values, which believes in a strong family value, and a woman is a builder and must always be reminded. Abuse should be a no-no, but our African women easily break their homes like Western counterparts. Okay, I have a call from Austria. Joseph, are you there? Austria. Yeah, hello. You're live. Go yeah. ahead, please. Yes. Yeah, uh, what I want to say is, although I'm a first-time caller, Welcome I've been trying to, the to show. you guys for a long time now. Uh, what I want to uh, say is this. It all boils down to the education. Okay. Be it the formal or the informal education. Okay. As uh, Miriam, uh, Miriam said something about uh, the issue of vernacular and so, uh, this was pointed on us in school because we adopted the official language as English. Now, the problem is this. At home, when the parents train the child, they speak the language. When you go to the school, your teacher trains you, they speak the official language. So, the problem now is that when both parties are the good line, it helps to bring up the child formally. There was a program sometimes here in Austria here uh, for cultural diversity, and we brought up from 150 countries in the city of Graz, where I am. They wanted them to speak their language. The Chinese, the other could speak their language, but the Africans couldn't speak their language, and the Austrians were very annoyed. And they said, please, parents, teach your children your language when they are at home. When they get to school, they will teach them, the, they will learn the German language and the English. Right. And then the next thing, when it comes to also the issue of uh, the submissiveness of wives to parents and all these things, the issue, people don't spend time with each other enough. Right. Austria, well, um, just let me stay with you for a minute because we're about to talk about the issue of the Super Falcons. And I know that you're in Austria where this happened. Did you hear about the news? The fact yeah, that uh, the one Nigerian. Sorry, I. Yeah, go ahead. I saw that scene on the thing. Yes. Did you hear about the news? I believe that I believe, believe? I believe that I believe that man, that that man has his brain upside down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Joseph, for your thoughts. Okay, so yes. cool. thank you very much. Let's talk about this happened. So, for those of you that have no idea, what we're talking about the Super Falcons were on the public bus, and um, a Nigerian um, accosted them, accused them of representing a terrorist government and representing Buhari for coming to play. Uh, representing Nigeria. You can watch this clip for a second. Let's review it together. This organization, a terrorist government. You in Nigerian, you should be very ashamed of yourselves. Every one of you here should be very, very ashamed of yourself. I will speak to you. You should, you, it, it, this can't happen in another European country that their youth are representing a government. Stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. Stay quiet. Stay quiet. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, let me come to Maria and your thoughts on this. <laughs> okay, so first, see, I, I'm of two minds when it comes to this. First, I thought that he assaulted them and embarrassed them and embarrassed our country. These are people who are, for me, those young ladies are, are representing Nigeria. It's not about the different administrations or what one person feels about it. They are representing their families, their friends, their culture, the Nigeria that we all believe in. I feel that sporting events, that's what the sporting events are for. And that sometimes we should take the politics out so that we can all enjoy. Because usually it's when we have these sporting events that we put aside all our differences and we celebrate together as one. Now, secondly, the other part that I have is that um, I've seen in America where people take the knee during um, basketball games and all their football games mm. to highlight some of their e political issues, yeah. some of social political issues that they are going through. We know about the Black Lives Matter. So I don't know if this man is saying to them, in your sport, if, okay, I think it would have been better if the man says to them, in your 
in doing this, also raise the awareness of what Nigeria is going through. There's so many people being kidnapped and, you know, you know now what we're going through in Nigeria, the insecurity mm -hmm. and things like that. If it was a conversation on how do we use our presence here in Europe to highlight some of our issues so that we get international support or international um, recognition for that, that is better. But for this one, he seemed to be castigating them for, for doing something right, yeah. in my opinion. Well, yeah, well, my own issue apart from everything else, mm. is why do our government people like to undermine us as Africans, as Nigerians? Why must they be inside the public transport, number one? Uh, 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 why? Why can they not rent bus? What is in it that Nigerian government cannot rent bus for them? Must they be in public transport? Don't know. Because if they were inside bus, nobody can assault them. Of course. Yeah, of course. So you have already made them feel less than they are yeah. by putting them inside a, 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 a public bus. True. Come on, do you see Man U or Chelsea or whoever inside? You Public. can't even see them on the road because they will have their private cars. You see, these, these people, whether it's footballers, uh, basketball, uh, whoever they are, once they're representing Nigeria, they should be given that sense of pride. Yes. True. Same True. Point. True. Simple. Yes. And the government failed them. That is why that guy was allowed what to assault What if he had a weapon, YK? Oh. Uh, what if he had a weapon? So, uh, so we, so that is like, like we keep sabotaging ourselves. I mean, mm. it's so difficult sometimes being a Nigerian. You know, you work your way to become a star, and yet you're still not giving that back up with, that, as, as a country. Like with your come from the country, it. it's quite so, sad. So I, I must agree with YK and Miriam both sides. I, I think that he assaulted them verbally. He confronted them and provoked area, uh, them and they were extremely patient with him. If he does it in Oshodi, he said no. He will not go away with it. <laughs> but it happened in Austria. So he can be telling them, I will call the police on you. But they should have called the police on him. He assaulted them. He should not have been allowed. And in fact, the least punishment should be that he's taken to a psychiatric home. It can't be normal. That man had the most unpatriotic behavior by attacking. People were already, our government have already insulted. By allowing them, go and I stop a bus for them to go for a match that they are representing the country. We know all the funds that we know. They use as Esther codes for, for ministers that mm. are not necessarily needed That's in China that. to go and mm. to escort the one that is you needed there, meet them. to go and get a loan. Okay, so but reporter, we cannot, so we will not sign that in this it's morning. It's still a train. If it's a train, why couldn't you still get a private you can oh, no, but you can rent a coach. I don't care whether it was a train, rent a, coach a bus, a train. anything. It's still public transport. You can rent a coach and you, you can privately. We, I, I, I traveled for many years on tour. Mm -hmm. Now, at the beginning of our career, they we used to hire a bus, a uh, train. We used to go inside. We didn't hire. We, we would see us like bush people carrying our load. By the time two, three years into tours, they, 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 we, they stopped it. They hired buses for us. Yes. By, by the time I, I um, retired from dancing, we were the sleeper buses, so we could travel overnight, comfortable. Thank you. Michael. Comfortable. So me, I know that it can be done. Mm -hmm. Now our own leaders, you cannot meet our leader on the road because those are, that's who this man should be. Uh, yes, that's who he should be uh, attacking. They met the statue governor uh, uh, on the road. Uh, that was like the statue so of the, the, the former the, governor, Korocha. No, I met him in the bus one time in the train. No, not even that one. There was a mention. Was it there weekend? was a time when they, in Germany, I think. It was, was at the venue now that the they, they faced him. But it was they met in the bus. But you know, the but the truth is, it our, was in the, our, at the venue they met him. But the truth is, our government people, when they travel, they travel with the privileges they over enjoy. They can afford taxi. But the people that are representing us, the people who who will sweat out to give us good names, who will finally put our names there in gold in in, in at, at, at tournaments and all of that are the ones we treat the least as, which, as the least important people. We expose them to a lunatic like this, who could call them names in a bus and even and so, yes. threaten and insult them and provoke them. If one of them had reacted, it would not be another bad image for yeah, our country. Nigerians are fighting on the bus. I, I'm fighting, but look at the level of provocation. Me, I cannot imagine somebody point camera in my face. In like this, in my country, even if it's abroad, that I will not react. So these people are extremely patient people. And they tried, they did their best. I think they should be commended. I think it, it, the least the government can do now is to so, commend the, so the, the crop now, of Nigerians. Let's, so let's talk about Nigerians abroad who are genuinely aggrieved 
about the way things are in Nigeria. They, they, they. So this man is coming from a place of hurt. He comes, if things are going on yeah. in Nigeria, he wouldn't have accosted our falcons like this. Because so the they want. So they, they, they also want something to be able to be done drastically. Now, oh. what can? How can we engage Nigerians abroad? In their grievances, what can they do to support, to help? What, 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 what can they do to support our fights here at home to ensure for good governance? Because that's the that's the root cause of this thing that he did. He really is frustrated about what's happening in Nigeria. That's the bottom First line. First of all, you should stop attacking ordinary Nigerians. Yeah, and start not, looking for government yeah, just people. Just as I when they come. No, you no, no, that's not nice. Ah. Don't look for government people. I, no, but they also. No. <laughs> Since he they, can why are they attacking? Why is they they attacking? are suffering what we are exactly. suffering now. The reason that they are on the bus that you saw them, they are just as aggrieved as the rest okay. of Nigerians. But imagine if he used that opportunity to um, politely and decently introduce himself and explain to them And even encourage hurt, them. And say to them, this is what we're going through. And what, when we watch it, we're so upset and we're so angry. And I question the youth. How do you see? Now ask their opinion. How do you feel? Imagine the sort of things that they may tell you what it caused them to even be able to come together. Oh. Because we've heard so many stories of how this... Um, their uniforms athletes, don't come on time. Yeah, their uniforms don't come on time. Sometimes they have to put their money together to pay for where they have to stay until yeah. government sends money to them. Yeah. Those are the things he would have gotten. And then together they would have made something, said something, and Nigerians would have heard even better. But here you came and you just insulted people, children. And then when they said, you know Nigeria now, and you see one thing with Nigerian elders, when one was trying to talk, he said, shut up, sit down there. Yeah, we always it. want to be the elder, wherever it is, and we don't respect ourselves, but we want respect to be given to us. Mm -hmm. so, someone says here on, on the tube, says, um, maybe they even gave them money to rent, but somebody collected oh, the money. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you remember mm. one... We must uh, think the worst mm. in Nigeria. But something that's happened so yeah. many no, times. No, Nima, you don't remember one that um, we took it on this uh, yes, no. table. When they, they, well, I think it was Brazil, the football in Brazil. Yeah, even they, no, they, they said that the, the money was on the plane. The money disappeared from the plane, <laughs> plane inside yes, the plane. Yes. I said, look at <laughs> hey, the money don't fly, go inside plane. Come on. They, 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 you know, these officials, they have to stop it. They have to stop these officials. But we, we would definitely minutes. like to hear from the, I mean, we, we now have um, the Minister of Youth and Sports. I mean, he's a, he's a young man, and mm. I'm sure he's taking measures to make changes. So we'd like to hear from him and, the, and, and what, what, what is done to protect these people going forward. But yeah. I, I want us to really look at how these Nigerians are abroad. Because as I said, they are also Nigerians. They are just as frustrated as we are. And they want to exert their grievances. Just sometimes they don't know how to. Well, yeah. Some of the most frustrated Nigerians that I think that, you know, are, have the right cause to be aggrieved are sports people. We see Arab nations come to tournaments that Nigerians have gone in the past and make and scout our people. The Arab countries don't give visas or stay to any country, except, you know, they need that person. It's only for professionals that they need that they will give you certain privileges, Saudi and all of them. But you see, when you see Nigerians in their team playing, you know that they've gone to offer them mouth-watering things that our government have ignored them for. You know why those people will go for tournaments and not return? It's because of the level mm. of disregard the minister for this will say uh, the money is approval, is passing through, and the person is frustrated. Some people buy their own plane tickets to go to countries to represent us. It's, our, it's in our stories. This will not be said that they accuse anybody. Uh, did I even tell you the story? I don't know if I sent it to the chat group, where the, uh, well, the government, they wanted to find out why Nigerians are always running away, why we, why we don't want to. So they sent a committee. I of people. <laughs> <You> <laughs> to go. <laughs> By the time they got to Australia, by the time they got to Australia, everybody was dropping. The next country, they, but it was in China. The chairman of the committee said did not come back. Come so they, they are still, the government is still waiting for the report okay. of that committee. Okay. Because all that's, the committee. That's a joke. So, I'm just, I don't know whether it's true or whether it's a. See, this thing YK is talking. Uh, but it's by the event. No. The committee YK. did not come back. The, the man, the chairman of the committee is in China, right? Now. It's a painful joke that you're sharing, YK. <laughs> Supporters Club, when I was a child, I think US 94, <laughs> we know some of my bros in our area who struggled to be in Supporters Club, rather they used to sing, they wear the shirt. These bros used to work out our estate to me by then. He would be doing all the uh, super eagles, super eagles. This brother, I never, I never see bros since. I have not, <laughs> it is not come back. The last time somebody said he was in this country, he came for his father's burial and he went back. He disappeared on Super Eagles Supporters Club teams. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, Nima, when I got to Australia, considered the plenty. Yeah, people go, they went to Australia for one tournament or something. Yeah. Olympics, 
All of them were there. The Australians are the ones that help them hide. Hmm. If ordinary South Africa that they raised, you know, there was the one we did with Africa, yes, no. he wouldn't come back. Uh, so I have, so I have we a need comment. to ask ourselves the question: Why are Nigerians not saying? And why are we encouraging it? Our government, when you tell a government official, they make excuses, they take offense. Yeah, yeah thank you. They call them unpatriotic. But these people, when you see them now, they have genuine uh, grievances. Yes. Why they can't stay? I have a Nigerian living abroad. Says that the issue of identity is broader than just the accent. It says that we speak our language to uh, to our children, but sometimes. We are always in a hurry to go to work. Of course, she's full of regrets. She says, um, now we are regretting it, trying to teach them now. So the truth is that when you enter ab abroad, you are trying to hustle, two, two three jobs, mm -hmm. trying to get your act together, yeah. trying to settle in the, in, in the new system, make sure your children have a good education. So you're not there trying to transfer any culture. Now, a lot of maybe these Indians and Chinese, maybe it's the man or the, the breadwinner. One person is doing the chasing, and you are doing the home, nurturing and raising them in your language. So maybe the, the, the reverse should happen in Africa, where, okay, where the women become nurses. Because usually when you travel abroad with your family, you throw your wife into the nursing system, where you're going to learn nursing and become, have money. While you do taxes, maybe you're, you're now, you can, you can be in the house. So maybe the man who is at home should then take on that role of, transferring culture, tradition, language, the way of life to the children. Because we have to, and, and I think it's important, we go back to what we had said earlier, what the man Nima said. Let us define the African culture, especially when we travel. What is, what is it in Nigeria? When we and go what abroad, is what is it? it? Let us define it. Well, let's say the truth. Our parents, we are here today, we can speak. Oh, I pause, pause, pause. Let me take the minute. Okay, I, want to, I don't want to miss that point. Let me talk about you there. So sorry. Hello? Hello. hello I do apologize. Go ahead, please, from the uh, UK. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. go ahead. Yeah, good morning. I'm good a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for discussing this point. Um, I've, got, I've got two things to say. First of all, it's about our identity that you need to mention. Uh, my, my take on it is the fact that when, when you have parents, there's so many issues around you that you have to look into. For example, I've got my 21-month-old son. I am considering, okay, what school am I going to put him in? Am I going to put him in a state school? Am I going to put him in a... Um, Grammar school, am I going to put him in a private school? And which area am I going to go to? Because I want to give him so much opportunities. But at the same time, I don't want to introduce himself. So I'm thinking of myself to say, okay, um, if I put him in a state school or in a government school, and um, we have that opportunity. Because many things, in, I'm sure you know in Nigeria as well, many of our parents put our children in private school because we want them to meet so many people and um, get opportunities, we to get more opportunities in life. Mm -hmm. So. Those decisions are made. Some people, I'll say they're making it because they're thinking that, okay, this will give them more opportunities, give their children more opportunities to have better things in life. Some people, maybe they're doing it out of ignorance. And then the second bit that you ladies were um, discussed this morning, as yet, women and, and losing their identity. My own take is men need to choose. Do you want women to be African women, whereby they don't work? They stay at home, take care of the family, take care of the children, and then the man will take all the responsibilities in the house. Or do you want a woman to go out to work, but then you then need to share her responsibility as a woman? As, and then you, she, you then share her responsibility as a woman. So you help her in the house. While well, she's helping you to pay the, um, the rent, she's helping you to pay bills, you also need to share the responsibility of taking care of the children. You can't have it both ways. Right. You can't tell her to be the woman as well as help you to share your responsibility mm. as a man. So men need to decide what they want exactly. and then you go along with them. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, oh, ladies. Fantastic. And Thank you, Timmy. I, I, I love I the love point it. you made. Mm. But you see, what, what, the points you raised first concerning the fact that they want to get opportunities for their children. It goes back to the ones, the forebearers, I would call them. The Nigerians that went in the 80s, in the 70s, they didn't go there to build institutions, to start a supermarket um, enterprise. Where one Nigerian, I have somebody right now who's a doctor in America, and he's, he's been there for so many years, he's trying to start a hospital, right, to build, he's about to get licensed to get a hospital, so that when Nigerians are coming abroad, they can have somewhere to come and do their oh, residency. Yes. Because he knows how hard it took him to get a spot. So Nigerians before him, the, the, those that went in the 80s, they didn't build, they went there for themselves, me, myself, and my children. So these new Nigerians are coming and they're struggling, trying to see how I can, how do I find my own American dream? But a few that had gone in the 80s, in the 70s, and the 90s, had gone there to build an industry, build an enterprise. The way the Chinese do. The way the Chinese and Indians do. When our people are coming in the 2000s, they are seeing a supermarket strip, well, strip mall owned by Nigerians. Mm -hmm. They are seeing yeah, the business, oh, business is owned by Nigerians. Okay, let me start there until I work, work my own to start my own. We don't do that. We are so selfish. 
So it's all of us. So and so if you have been born, just like that one you're talking about, my cousin, is my cousin yes. abroad built a lab called Butali Lab. And the, opposite, the opportunities he gives, Nigeria, especially graduates from the university, he finished Unilag, where he finished in Nigeria, is amazing. And he has been awarded for it over and over. I think we, we, what we need to emphasize is that wherever you go, the path that you're taking, it, somebody must not suffer that suffer that you did. Yes. You can always yeah. make it better and greener that's for other people. That's uh, the for, for formula. For formula. That's what you do. And that's why the, the many of them are successful in Texas. So, yes. So you because they've been able to replicate that formula. Exactly. Nigerians in Texas so are very, are very I wealthy. Help, the, help create a community where we help ourselves. Yes. And so, you know, if we, even if the person, because Nigerians are quick to say, some Nigerians are difficult to help. I, I put him in my house and he's now, you know, becoming a burden on me and all of that. You can, you know, amongst yourself, find someone who will talk to you that, well, we don't burden ourselves here, we help ourselves. Yeah. So you must be up and doing. Let me tell you a couple from Calabar. Iben, are you there? <laughs> Yeah, good morning. Your life. You? Go ahead. I'm good. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay. I want to comment on the issue of the guy on the video from yeah, Austria. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I want to kindly ask, without any prejudice, what he referred to, what he was talking about. Is it true? Is it true? Are we going through those crises in our country? Are we being kidnapped? Are we being killed? Are we being raped? Are we being robbed of justice? Is it true? What he was trying to, to reply to is it true? Because I want to say, if these things are really true, which is true, whether he confronted them with a slap or with an embrace, it shouldn't matter. We should rather be commenting on what he raised, the issue he raised, because we have a very terrible issue in our hands. And if you, from my youth, I know that if you oppress a man too much, he becomes inflated and at the end he bursts out. And when he bursts out, he's not always pleasant. So we should not attack the guy for saying it the way he says. He may have been wrong, that is it. He is wrong in the way he presented it. But we have an issue in our hands. Even let me stay with you. Before. Even let me stay with you. There's something Nima always talks about that. We shouldn't always go through the self-help avenue. So in this situation, he, are the Falcons the right people to express his vent grievances on, to vent on? I make a video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, no, I will say yes. You know what? Okay. Because he saw the Falcons. The politicians who have done this work are out of his reach. The driving flashy cars are brought from one hotel room to the other and to their residences and bought from our resources. So the people to take the message down to change the street is you and I. Now let's face the truth. If all Nigerians feel the street and say we want a change, we demand this thing to stop, the politicians will not be able to do otherwise. They can't withstand us because we are more than them. But we are all afraid because we have one thing or the other at stake. We have our jobs, we don't want to lose it, so we play the hypocrite. We play a lot of hypocrisy. We have political appointments we don't want to lose. We have our businesses, we don't okay. want the government to come up with certain laws to you know, clamp down on us. Right. Everybody just keeps new. Right. I don't think I'm concerned uh, in this okay. video. Message lost. Yes, yeah, so I don't I, I really That's do not concern. believe that many Nigerians are quiet. I mean we have protests and arrests of protesters to show for it. Nigerians are speaking. Yes, maybe not as many as we would like. But we're talking about this particular group of people. They were doing something good. They were doing something for our collective. Was it that, that feeling pride. of just, yeah, of pride. These are the, these sorts of events. Athletes usually help us, remind us about our unity. And so to put them and vent on them and embarrass and insult them, it was uncalled for. Awesome. And as, as you said, message lost. Because these are the people that honestly represent the everyday um, Nigeria, the man on the street. If you were talking to government officials, because they do travel, if he was talking or if he was on his phone, putting the camera up to his, his face, face and speaking and venting about the I'm things, sure, the ills yes. of our country and how it affects him and affects all of us. Mm -hmm. I think that message would have been more powerful than what he did there. Right. The, uh, mm -hmm. Maria, mm. what, where Ibe is coming from, mm. she's talking from her own frustration. Yeah, okay. She's asking the things he was asking. Now, he, if he had put the camera on his face mm -hmm. and vented, mm -hmm. would the video have gone viral? Probably. It would not. 
I can assure you because many people have done it mm -hmm. and it didn't go viral. It went viral because it was the Falcons. Now, um, what he did was, I, I don't agree with what he did, mm -hmm. but she's talking from her own frustration that these things are happening. Mm -hmm. There is insecurity, there is this, there is that. Right. So why can't you Let me take this, Kenneth. Let me take Kenneth. <clears throat> Kenneth has been holding from Moshwedi. Good morning, Kenneth. Are you there? Good morning, ma'am. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Okay, how are you? I thank you for what you people are doing. Yes, sir. I just want to make my own contribution. Yes, sir. You see, the issue we are having, I thank the last caller, you know, who made the call, telling you exactly what happened. Now, but you people are trying to disagree with him, uh, her, sorry, because uh, the man spoke to the women. The women should learn to take responsibility. It's not every time, if that man spoke to the men for Everybody will be happy. Mm -hmm. But now the man spoke to the women food. They can take this message back to Nigeria. This is how our people are feeling abroad. They are not happy with what is happening in our system. Because women have always want to measure, but most of the time they don't want to take the responsibility that the man wants to do. So these are the problems. Now the, the, uh, the women food are not happy. The Falcons were the ones this message was Okay, great. To. Ken, let me, let me be sure I understand you. We are... You are yeah. turning a conversation about a man who, was, who had accosted the Falcons to a gender issue. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand where that's coming from. This has nothing to do with man or woman. This is the fact that a citizen who lives abroad, some fellow citizens who are representing us, you and I in Nigeria, oh, are, they're, 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 they're trying to do their thing as athletes. And you're now, when it's not a gender issue, I, I, please help me understand. Is that what you're saying? No, no, what I'm saying, you know, I've been following the, I've been following I've been following the program since you've been talking. I've been trying to get across okay. from, you know, women, men, the living abroad and all the problems they're having. Okay, so that there. one is a different, okay. Okay, okay. all right, I, no problem. Th th okay. okay. Go ahead. One issue, do you understand? Yeah. And uh, people are not happy, or you, the, your guests are not happy, they are talking to the Falcon. Do you understand me now? Mm -hmm. okay. So, they are not happy. Okay, we have to run anyway. We have, let's take a few messages. I think I, maybe he's mixing so up So this the, is what uh, I wanted to say to uh, Iben when she called, that this man, somebody posted a tweet where YK was tagged and, and it um, was, if you believe that you're truly, YouTube. Yeah, sorry, if you believe that you're true, you, we can truly call you patriotic. They are do, okay, the only people that we can truly call patriotic are those who hold passports or citizenships of other countries, but choose to remain in Nigeria despite, re, remain in Nigeria, despite experiencing extreme difficulties. If you don't get choice, what do you go do? This man already has a choice. But you see this young Nigerians who must have gone through even worse things that he, he left this country for, struggling to represent the country, and you wanted to pass a message to government, and you think it's to accost them and embarrass them that will pass this message. I think it's message lost, wrong method used. So if you find another method, even if you don't want to put your face, find another thing to make it trend, but don't frustrate Nigerians for that. Because you two, you'll be terrorists. You just terrorize these people. Oh you, in a public bus, put a camera on them, and you see some of the people, in Nigerians, in their, in their, trying to hide their face yeah. in the hardship that they're being through. And that is what I don't, don't also Don't tell me like... your problem is bigger than my problem. All of us in Nigeria, we get the same problem. So far, we know that we are suffering banditry, kidnapping. A lot of us are living right here, here struggling <laughs> bad roads, you know, and speaking up against these things every day. Every single day. Can right? I take some Put our kids yes, through it. And then just to add, uh, YK, you know, where YK was saying video, something about he that. may not have trended if he had not done it the way that he did. And that's what I do not like about social media, where you take advantage of people just so that you can you trend. trend. It does not make sense. Yes. It's wrong. Yes. PJ yes. Comedian has found us on YouTube. Says, hey. That guy just leveraged on the Falcons so his message can go far. Yeah. If he saw a politician in, in that train, he would have done the same. He, he just used what he had to get what he wanted. Billy Kiss, um, sorry, let me, um, I, there was another one I saw. Uh, he says he hid his face because the politicians will come after right. his life. That's Chinaza um, Henry. Right, right. And, um, Mm. We have to wrap up on this, but I think um, so. Today we've talked with we've talked Ramsey. <laughs> there are many tubes. Like I, this one says, uh, uh, "Point of correction: The Falcons team is not representing me." Teresa Chikanele says, "Play the clip in full." He also said, "Buhari is a terrorist." Which oh my dear, All right. oh, oh my word. We have to run here. This one is an irresponsible man. Even if you don't support this administration, they won't be in government forever. Who is happy with the state of economy right now? This country is blessed, and we have just 
being unlucky with our leaders. Um, you see, I think the, the, the insurrection that happened um, earlier this year in the U.S. Was, was quite illuminating for some of us to say, like, like everybody can go mad. Not just the... And every country has Every its country issues. has own issues. Mm -hmm. Both us, the white man, the black man, we all have that coin coin that can, that can trigger anything. But at the end of the day, that's why there's a government. That's why there's something called democracy. There's a system. Yes, we're angry. We'll keep talking. But we can't harm ourselves because we want to. So yes, we want to protest. We want to, we want to do this. But that's why, we, that, that's why we condemn the fact that there was a protest we, which was legal, but then hoodlums took advantage to turn that around. So we're saying, yes, we want to legally protest, mm -hmm. but don't take advantage of burning houses, burning businesses. That is not that. That is not. But there's a school of thought, yes. uh, Mariah, yeah. that says the hoodlums that took over were actually sent by government people uh -huh. to disrupt. That's another school of thought. But it happened there's in, a school in of South Africa, like 100 malls. 400 children, they, they, they had them um, Walmarts. Mm -hmm. I saw the, I saw the, 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 the statistics. Uh, I, 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 I saw, I, I saw So one these one. are Africans. So the, 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 was it politicians that sent you to go and blow up 100, 100 malls? It's wrong. So as we are getting angry at ourselves, let's not harm each other. Mm. Let's vent well, well, to right, right in the right corner. We're not getting angry at ourselves. We are getting angry at, or they are getting angry at the authority, authoritative of your, the authorities, yeah. Sha, mm -hmm. in short. Yeah. It's so, but they now no. vent it in the wrong don't place. Have anyone, yeah. It's very brief. You see, if it, if it says, you talked about living in abroad, but what about children in Lagos and Ibadan, Oshogu and the rest? You will call and they'll be telling you. That's all we can, can take on the show. Unfortunately, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>